Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Okay, people are adding. Again, hello to everyone who is just uh, added after I greeted first group of people. Hello. And um, yes, hi, hi. Um, and I would like to ask you to um, choose one of options which I'm going to talk about. I can start right now my today's lecture. Or the second option, if you need, I can discuss some problems from your yesterday's quiz. What do you want? Can you express your opinion, please? Do you, do you need any help for yesterday's quiz problem? I think we're okay. You are okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, as I promised yesterday, I stayed to the end of our class and even five extra more minutes I stayed on Zoom. Uh, and because I told you uh, about opportunity if you definitely needed that opportunity to come back and to ask me about anything what um, was confusing for you. And I had that kind of visitor and I received a request from student, from one of students from your class. It was from Lynn. Uh, she asked me to help her today with two problems of her choice. And these two problems are in your textbook on page number 392, and problems are number 20 and number 24. I definitely promised her to explain how to solve these problems. Uh, are you interested in doing this right now? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. In this case, can you please be on page number 392 with problem number 20? Problem number 20. And I'm going to have my calculator handy as well. We need that. Do you need anything from yesterday's problem, which I had here, about cube roots from eight, all values of cube roots in the complex set of complex numbers? Or I can remove it because I need more space and I don't have enough space here. It's okay, we can move on. Okay. So I first will start with problem number 20, and after that I will solve problem number 24. Both are in your section 9.6. Um, I'm going to read what we had for this problem. Use the polar form of the complex number to find the value in Cartesian form z equals x plus y times i. And the problem was one plus i to the two third power. This was your problem number 20. Problem number 20. And I will do exactly what the textbook requests. It says, 
use the polar form of the complex number to find the value which you have to provide as a final answer in the algebraic form or actually Cartesian form. It is or rectangular form. They are synonyms. Algebraic form, Cartesian form, or rectangular form. Let's do that. This why knowing that I should work with this problem using the polar form first, I am going to convert that number which we have inside of parentheses, which is one plus i, which was given in its algebraic form. I am going to convert this into polar form or exponential form. I'm going to write on this side, z equals one plus i. z equals one plus i, where I have x part, which is the real part equal to one, and imaginary part, which is imaginary coefficient, where we talked about that already, is also one. So far, so good? Yes. yes. After that, I will find the modulus, which is r. r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. I'm doing this all on the side, which is equal to one squared, which is one, plus another one squared, which is another one, which is equal to square root of two. Can I continue? Yes. After that, I would like to find the location for that z. If your x is equal to one, which means x is positive, y equals to one, y is another positive number, then what is the location for that z? Which quadrant? First, First quadrant. It is number one quadrant because X and Y are both positive only in the first quadrant. So equipped by this information about the location of that Z and knowing that X is one and Y is also one, I can find tangent of that polar angle, tangent of theta, equals y over x and i know that it is actually one for y one for x i'm plugging that numbers and i'm getting tangent theta equal to one now what do i have about this theta tangent of this theta is one and this is theta from the first quadrant because actually it is a polar angle and i know that this number z which is one plus one i or just one plus i is from the first quadrant i am asking you guys to solve this extremely easy trigonometric equation which angle from the first quadrant has tangent equal to one, positive one. Pi over four. Pi over four. Absolutely, yes, I already wrote it down. Theta belongs to pi over four. So which means now I know a modulus, which is R, and I know the angle for that particular trigonomet uh, for that particular complex number. Can I write now this in the polar form? Yes. So it will be r, which is square root of two, right? And what do you have after? You have e to the i times pi over four, if, or if you like, e to the pi over four times i. This is your polar form of that number. So far, so okay. good. Can you move the paper a little bit? Thank you.
So far, so good? Yes. Yeah. And now I'm going back to my problem. I will put an equal sign. And now instead of one plus i to the two thirds, I'm going to write in parentheses square root of two e to the i times pi over four. Please close parentheses and write down two thirds. What do I have in this parenthesis? Is it product to the power? Yes. Yes. How do we raise products to any powers? We raise each factor of that product into that power. So this is why I'm breaking this now into two pieces. By the way, square root of two, is it two to the one half? Yes. yes. And I will be raising this to the two thirds and multiply by e to the i pi over four, also raised to the two thirds. Can I continue? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do that. How do we raise powers to the power? Do we keep the base? Yes. Do we multiply exponents? Yes. Yes. So let's start with the first part. Two to the one half raised to the one, two thirds. So I am going to keep that too. If you multiply one half by two thirds, can you cancel both twos? Yes. Yes. Are you left with one third? Yes. yes. So this is what I wrote down, two to the one third. In the same manner, please multiply the second part of that. E to the i times pi over four raised to the two thirds. So I'm keeping that E, definitely. I have this i. I'm going to multiply pi over four by two thirds. Can we cancel four and two by two? Yes. And what do you get? Two on the top is gone, pi is left, but instead of four, we have two. Two times three, is it six? Yes. Is it i times pi over six? Yes. Yes. Can I continue? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. I am done everything what I could with that polar form. I need to find the value of that power and I need to convert this into algebraic form. What I'm going to do, I am going to convert this into trigonometric form. And look what I'm going to do. I will go back to the radical form because two to the one third is cube root of two is it correct yes yes i wrote it down but now i need to multiply this by a trigonometric form and i can use ehlers formula because we all the time can convert e to the i times theta into trigonometric form cosine theta plus i sine theta this is what i'm going to do so it will be cosine of pi over six plus i sine of pi over six. Can you move it a little bit? Yeah, sometimes it is difficult to find the, the, the better way how to display because when I do that, I do not see the screen. There is a paper in front of my face. Can you see that now? Yeah. Yeah. Did you copy that? Yes. Excellent. And what I see here, I see here very beautiful angles, pi over six reference angles, 30 degrees or pi over six in radians. 
definitely we need to know values for that cosine and sine. So I'm copying cube root of two. Now, dear ladies and gentlemen, what is the value of cosine of pi over six? Square root of three over two. Is it everyone's opinion? Yes. You know what, mine also. So plus i, what is the value of sine? Oh. Uh -huh. Pi over six. I heard one half. Is it everyone's opinion? Yes. You know what, mine also. So I am replacing them by square root of three over two and one half. And now I will continue. I need to drop this parenthesis. This is why I need to multiply both terms inside of parenthesis by this square root of three. Let's do that. So it will be square cube root of two times square root of three over two plus I cube root of two multiplied by one half. I distributed. Could I? Could you move it up a little? Do you understand what I did? Yes. Yeah. And now let's see. This is not very pleasing situation, specifically with the first term, because I have cube root, I have square root, and I have two downstairs. What do I do? You know what? Because I saw that cube root of two, and I know I can convert this into exponential form, and I have two under square root of three, I will go back to two to the one third. Two to the one third multiplied by square root of three over two. And actually, or we also, if we like, we can treat that square root, of, but I will so far, we'll leave it alone, over two. Now, I will do the same thing with a square, cube root of two attached to i. So it will be i, it will be two to the one third times one half. Now, Please look at both parts which have base two. Let's say, let's look at the first term. What do we have here? Is it actually two to the one third? We should divide by two in the first power because it is downstairs under square root of three. Yes. Yeah. If you divide powers with same bases, do you keep the base and subtract exponents? Yes. So you are getting two to the one third minus one times square root of three. This instead of the first term. The mathematical part of that problem, which is related to our work in Polar, with polar form and conversion into trigonometric form is not really difficult. The most difficult part in this problem, how to work with these radicals and with these powers. I am going to simplify the second part. Plus I, two to the one third times one half. Is it two to the one third divided by two? Yeah. yeah. So is it the same thing actually here also? Oops. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Now, can you see here one third minus one for both terms? Yes. Yeah. Is it? Two to the negative two thirds. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, replace it by that two to the negative two thirds. I really like to get rid of these negative exponents. And do we have a formula for negative exponents? Guys, do we have in math or specifically in algebra formulas for negative exponents? Yes. Should I just move it down and change it to positive two thirds? Yes. Yes. Okay, please do that. So, this is how it will look. Agree? Disagree? Guys? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, right now, it is Algebra Math 120. So, now, I'm going to simplify these bottom parts. 2 to the 2 thirds. Is it two squared raised to the one third? Yes. In other words, can I write down that it will be cube root of four? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Please do that. So it is cube root of four in both denominators. And I really, really do not want to keep that irrational number in the denominator. What can I do? I can. I can multiply each of these fractions, trying to get rid of that cube root downstairs, by cube root of two. Can you tell me, please, why I'm multiplying this by cube root of let's say two, not let's say by cube root of four squared, which also can be done, but what I did is much better mathematically. Can you convince me why? Because two is the base of one. I, I uh, can you repeat please? Um, two is like the simplified or the, the base? I am simplifying. I'm trying to get rid of that cube root of four in denominator because according to math rules, uh, we cannot keep negative exponents in the final answers. We cannot keep uh, radicals uh, in denominators. Uh, how can I get rid of that? If let's say I try to keep four, I can multiply top and the bottom of each of these fractions by, by cube root of four squared, because I already have first power of four, and I can multiply by additional cube roots of four squared, so I'm reaching third power of four, and this uh, root downstairs will disappear, because it will be cube root of four cubed, which will be four, but I did not do that. I multiplied top and bottom by cube root of two. Why? This was my question. Okay, do you need my help? Yes. Yeah. Four. Is it the second power of two? Yeah. Yes. What would be more mathematically wise to have a power with smaller base or with bigger, greater base? Smaller base. So I have the option to treat that four like two squared. So I have already second power of two here in the cube root of four. This is why I'm multiplying just by one additional power of two to reach two cubed. Because now cube root of four multiplied by cube root of two will be cube root of eight. Let me write it down. So it will be square root of three, cube root of two, divided by cube root of eight is eight. Is, is it true that eight is the third power of any number? Yes. And what is that number? Two. So, so now your root will disappear like a smoke. So it will be two downstairs in both 
terms, but on the top, I have not extremely pleasing situation because now I have square root multiplied by cube root. But we can handle this as well. And let me show you how. And again, you learned that in your Math 120 course. This is what you are getting. You can see the most challenging part and the longest part here is algebra from 120 math 120 intermediate algebra course simplification of roots yes we can do that because we all the time can find their common index for square root and for cube root so a common index will be six because we have here in square root index of the root is two in cube root index is three. Multiply these numbers. So you are getting sixth root. But now you are going to change each of these roots to the new index. If you had square root of three, your index was two. Now you need to increase this index three times because six is two times three. You need to increase radicands power also three times. You had square root of three. In the version of the sixth root, it will be six root of three raised to the third power, because if you like to convert this now into uh, exponential form, the square root of three is three to the one half. Now it will be three to the three sixth. Three sixth is it equivalent of one half? Yes. Which means everything is absolutely correct, but it is very beneficial for us because we have now in the first fraction we will have here both roots with the same index i am going to do the same thing with cube root of two cube root of two had index three now i need to switch it to index six so which means i need to multiply all index by two so it will be six root but i need to change the radicand instead of two to the first power it will be two to the first power raised to the second power I need to increase the exponent. So it will be cube root, oh, excuse me, of square root of three is now sixth root of three cubed, and cube root of two is now sixth root of two squared. But the other cube root, I will not change because it is standing alone and it feels very comfortable there, and I'm not going to bother it. So I'm going to get sixth root of three cubed multiplied by sixth root of two squared i can combine them in one root because they have same indices so it will be sixth root of what about three cubed is it 27 yes what about two squared is it four yes please multiply 27 by four and tell me what you get One hundred and eight. Absolutely, yes. And this is our last step because we are reaching the answer. This is your answer for that particular problem. Sixth root of one zero eight divided by two plus i cube root of two divided by two. And I box that answer. Questions? No. 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 Lynn, you asked me about this problem. How about you? Are you okay now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, 
With your permission, dear ladies and gent gentlemen, I'm not asking just Lynn about that. Can I proceed to another problem? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The next problem was problem number 24 on the same page. And here we also widely will be using intermediate algebra course. Solve the simultaneous equations for the complex numbers A1 and A2. I don't know why they wrote this in that kind of funny way, why they could not just write down, solve this system for A1 and A2, because we have here two unknowns. This is why, you know, I'm quite rebellious and anytime when I see what bothers me mathematically, I try to change it to better way. So basically I can say, changing this request here, just solve the given system for A1 and A2, that's it. This is why I'm going to write here this problem as a system because simultaneous equations which carry same variables or unknowns, they are systems of that equations. Why should I call this by that funny name, like simultaneous equations? If it is just simply a system of equations, I like more precise and more sharp math language. This why you can see I play there a symbol of the system on the left, combining these two equations. These systems can be solved using many different methods because actually from the algebraic point of view, this is a system of two linear equations because A1 and A2 here are in the first power. And again, we can solve here many, many different, uh, using many different methods. But you know what, first equation, which is A1 plus A2 equals to two, looks very, very easy, let's say, to use a substitution method, which is one of really famous methods, which can be easily used not just for linear systems of equations that can be used for many, many systems because we have specifically designed methods just which we can apply in the linear systems, but substitution method can be applied you solving many different systems, not just linear. This why you can solve this equation, number one, or for A2 or for A1. Let's say I'm solving this for A2. So A2 equals, 2 minus A1, and I'm going to box that substitution to make it more visible. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm going to plug this expression for A2 into second equation, and I'm getting 1 minus I times A1 plus 1 plus I times parenthesis two minus A1 equals to zero. Do I understand where it is coming from? Yes. I replaced A2 by its equal expression, which is two minus A1. Deal? Yeah. Yes. And now yeah. I'm going to simplify it distributing and foiling. So one times A1, A1 minus I times A1 plus one times two, which is two, one times negative A1, it is minus A1. I times negative, so it will be minus I times A1 equals to zero. So here I am getting one, two, three, I, I probably I missed something. One times two, yes. One times negative, uh-huh, one. So, and can you please look if you have here like terms? Plus two minus a one 
Uh-huh. Okay, guys. Should I show you that line? I can. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what I got. Dropping parentheses. So can you see you have here A1 with plus and A1 with, with minus? Can we cross them out? Yes. Yes. Do that. Mm -hmm. What do you have beside that? You have here two like terms and they are absolutely matching with uh, same signs, negative i times a1 and another negative i times a1. If we combine them, is it negative 2i a1? Yes. Yes. After that, what do you have? You have just single term 2. Can we copy that? Yeah. Yes. And besides that, what do we have here? We have here positive 2i and everything equals to zero. Is it correct? Yes. Do you feel that you have many twos in this sentence? Yes. yes. What if we divide? You can factor out that two and to write this in the factored form, or just you can simply divide immediately both sides by two, by, by two simplifying this equation because I am really bothered by so many twos. Two, negative two, positive two, positive two. So reduce all these coefficients. So you are getting negative i a1 plus one plus one i equal to zero. Can you see we have just one spot with a1? Yeah. Yes. Can we, let's say, leave it on this left side and move two other terms to the other side? Or if you like, you can actually leave one plus i on the left and move i times a1 to the right and will become positive. I think that will be even more elegant. What do you think? Yeah, we can do it that way. Okay. So I'm keeping one plus i here. I'm moving that uh, negative i times a1 to the other side, to the right, it becomes positive because we need to change this sign. And this is what I'm getting. Can I divide both sides by i? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. i here, downstairs, i here. We can cancel i's on the right. And I'm getting a1 equals one plus i, over i agree yes but unfortunately i cannot declare this as an answer because i cannot leave any complex numbers in denominator according to math rules this is why i need to get rid of that how can i get rid of that you have here very short complex number, which is imaginary number i unit. You have two options where you can multiply top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom because i1 equals to the ratio or result of division of two complex numbers in algebraic form right now. And I showed you how to divide complex numbers in algebraic form. So you can multiply top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom, which will be negative i. You can, knowing that actually i squared is a regular real number, negative one, you can multiply top and the bottom by i. What do you prefer? Both ways are practically same kind. I cannot say that one way is better than another one. Would you like to multiply top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom, as we usually do when we divide complex numbers? Or this is like special case because downstairs we have easy complex number i. We can multiply top and bottom just by i. What do you prefer, by negative i or by i? 
by i by i multiply by i You are getting downstairs i squared on the top you have one times i which is i and you have plus i squared and this y i'm writing down that it will be i i squared is negative one and i need to divide by negative one and i'm going to get rid of that fractional form right now so i divided by negative one will be negative i negative one divided by another negative one will be one so i am getting negative i plus one but i will not leave it in that form because it is a complex number it is actually one minus i so this is your value for a1 you found that value a1 equals 1 minus i. And now I have this box for a2. I'm going to use this. I'm doing this on the other side. So it will be 2 minus a1, which is 2 minus 1 minus i. So which means a2 will be equal 2 minus 1, which is 1 minus negative i will be plus i and voila this is your value for a2 i am done with this particular problem Lynn and company, are you okay now with this second problem? Yeah. Yes. Do you need any additional feedback? Any details? No. Do you understand how to do these problems? Yeah. So, if you just ask to find the root I showed this type of problems uh, already, like in problem number 13, in problem number 11, 14. Uh, now, how to simplify results of the powers, uh, you also already, you can see that like in problem number 20, in all these problems from number 14 to 23, you have certain steps. If it is given in the algebraic form, convert this into polar form perform operation convert into trigonometric form and using values of trigonometric functions please replace them by these values and get your answer again in algebraic form if like in problem number 33 you are asked to find all values of certain roots don't forget that if you are asked about all values of certain root, look at the index. If your index is five, it is the fifth root, you should have five answers. If the index is nine, it is nine root of certain number, it is also should have nine different answers. And you have a formula which I provided, which is in your previous lecture, this is line number three in the box form. In this box, it is line number three. How to find these values of root in trigonometric form. So if originally your complex number was given in algebraic form, you should convert this into polar form. And after that, when you have your polar form, you are kind of performing these operations and converting this into trigonometric form and after that use that formula in this box on line number three and i showed all these steps in problem number 34. problem number 34 has all details how to work with these problems yes 
they are very unusual. This, uh, they look absolutely different because, for example, we are so used to that, that cube root of eight is just two or cube root of negative eight is negative two, but not in the set of complex numbers. And cube root of eight and cube root of negative eight and cube root of any other number will be having three different values. Actually, I was not planning to devote today's lecture to, again, uh, that material, but I don't, don't regret. So, but this honestly is the last day when I talk about uh, this material. We covered already a lot. And I would be offering you a test for this material. So today is what? Today is Tuesday, right? Yes, the fifth. Mm -hmm. What about coming Thursday? And tomorrow I will be more specific about what can you expect for that test because we definitely covered so many things. We reviewed trigonomy trigonometry, we covered polar coordinates, and we have this material. Okay. So tomorrow I will probably talk about more details about the coming test. Is it okay with you? Yes. Yes, that's fine. Excellent. Let me actually check right now attendance because I did not do that today. I definitely see the names of people here. Please do not leave that side before I call your name because it will be faster if I will use the roster instead because unfortunately your names here are not in alphabetical order. I see your names, but they are easy, for me it is easier when they are in alphabetical order. So Andrew? Here. Tima? Lorraine? Here. Lynn was here. here. Juanita. Here. Ayuran. Uh, Here. Gabriel. Divina. Here. Okay. Chantal. Here. Thank you. Chantal. Uh, here, um, Gongsi, I see yeah. your name, yeah. Gongsi, yes. Yes. Kyle. Here. Matthew. I here. think I saw Matthew's name also already. Julian. Here. Nathan. Here. Alejandro. Here. Would you like to ask me about anything, guys? I think we're okay. Yeah, they're good. Nothing more. Please keep your eyes on Wiley Plus side because I am communicating, assigning new assignments and new um, online quizzes. And you probably can see another online quiz. Please, please, please be careful. We have, after that, um, the quiz, which we um, um, already on your side, I already posted that number 13. We will have, as I remember, only one additional online quiz, and that's it for this semester. So please be careful. Don't miss anything because any additional zero on your, on, uh, you know what, in the system for your grade for online quiz will not improve your overall grade in this class. Try to do your best finishing that semester. We, I know everyone struggles and it is extremely difficult time, but a little bit more of patience, a little bit more of effort, and we will finish this very, very stressful semester. I know everyone is under stress, trust me, I am also under huge stress because I'm doing a lots of work extra, which I'm not even being paid for even one penny. I don't regret that because I'm doing that for benefits of my students. Everyone, can I say warm goodbye to everyone? Yes. Yeah.
Yes. Please stay healthy and safe. Be extra careful when you go to buy groceries or be outside when you are outside of your residences. Please be extra careful. And the best wishes to you and your families. Okay? Bye. Goodbye, guys. Have a nice, beautiful day. Bye. Thank you. Too. You're welcome.